Hi, this is Irene Woods. I'm now hanging a hem, which isn't as difficult as it would sound like it is. What I'm doing is skipping every other main color stitch and then hanging it on every other needle on the bed. So skip one, pick up one, skip a needle, and then take the next one. The band has more elasticity. In other words, it stretches more if you only pick up every other stitch. I have hung the hem from the first row of main color. And what I'm going to do now is just take it off on a single strand of yarn. This is quite strong. It's got some nylon in it, so it really is quite strong. Um, and it's worsted weight yarn, so we're fine to just use a single strand. On a standard gauge machine, if you're using a soft yarn that breaks easily, I would definitely double it. Well, and I prefer to work from the right side of the bed, but because I ran out of yarn, short one row, I ended up with the carriage on the left instead of on the right. And it certainly can be done from either end. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I've got the needle threaded. Now where there's two stitches on a needle, make absolutely sure that you have both stitches because if you don't, you'll have a drop and it will run. All I'm doing is just picking those stitches off onto this needle. And then just pull your thread through. I would estimate we probably had close to 30 inches when I started. Somewhere between 24 and 30 inches. And that's just about the right amount. So I guess we were lucky in that respect. I wish I had been able to get one more row of knitting, but there wasn't quite enough. But again, all I'm doing is just picking these stitches off. And it really doesn't matter how you get it as long as you go through both stitches. This is the simplest method for finishing the neckband. It also makes the flattest seam. However, it's not as sturdy as some of the other methods. You might prefer to backstitch. We would start the same way, hang the hem, and then thread the yarn into the needle and just simply backstitch across. That makes a relatively flat seam. It's comfortable to wear. The next method that I do use is to bind off with the latch tool going around the sinker posts. And if you decide to bind off with the latch tool, I really recommend this method. Binding off around the sinker posts, or the gate pegs as they're sometimes called, um, makes it a lot stretchier. We're now getting ready to put in the short row shaping at the base of the yoke. I have hung the back on the machine and as you can see we've got quite a fold here. That's because the yoke is a circular shape or at least a very strong curve and the needle bed is a straight shape. And when you try to put a curve onto a straight shape and mush them together, you get something like this. Looks like a very wide dart or pocket. The same thing will happen on your body if we don't add some short row shaping down here. Now, if the fabric, the knitted fabric, is very loose, sometimes it doesn't do that terribly. 
But what's likely to happen, particularly on ladies with a larger bust, you're going to continually be pulling the front of your sweater down. If you don't, it does form a shelf, and that'll end up usually between your armhole and your chin. Not very comfortable and not very attractive. So the best way we have found to get around that is to do some short row shaping. I've already put it in on the left side. Put a clothespin on the yarn so it holds it down. Now at this point, I'm going to set the carriage for hold. I'm going to push back five needles on the edge, about halfway on the bed so that they will knit. Set the row counter to zero and I have already done that. Now, knit one row across to the left. Pass the yarn under the first holding needle. Then go back to the right. And that has short rowed five stitches. Now we need to increase on the side and short row on this side. I'm using a two prong tool. Move two stitches out. Pick up the heel of the stitch and fill the empty needle. Push back five more. Knit across. Wrap and knit back. And that's two short row shapings. Increase on the edge. And push five more back into work. Wrap the first holding needle, knit back to the right. Increase on the right. Push five more back. Increase on the right. five more back. Okay, increase on the right. Okay, can you see the wedge that we've made? That's usually enough to take care of this little pouch that develops. Now we still have just a little bit of it here on the machine because there's still a curve from here to here. But it's a whole lot less pronounced than it was. And for a sweater this is usually enough. You could make one more step if you wanted to, but it really isn't necessary. Cancel hold. Get across and back. And now all we have to do is complete the raglan shaping as per pattern. 
and that will be depending upon the size you're going to increase one stitch on the edge every two rows till you get to the base of the armhole we're going to do exactly the same thing on the front back and front on this pattern are alike um, it actually fits pretty well you wouldn't need to put as many rows in the back if you didn't want to and as I mentioned before if you want a little bit deeper front neck you could add at least one more um, a short row step and maybe two so this pretty well covers the short row this is done differently than a lot of the currently popular hand knitting patterns they don't have you short row here I'm sorry you can't see that they don't have you short row here instead what they ask you to do is put your short rows up here and you would be building the back neck higher so when you would get to this point then you would be short rowing like say from here to here and then you would add a step when you come this way and then add, add another step when you go over here that's really hard to do on these two piece and four piece yoke sections and that's why we don't recommend it if you are determined to do it that way I'm sure you can figure it out